episode 140 of The World Beyond Belief. I am your co-host, Mindy Erkin, and with me today is your host, Paul Marco. Thanks, Mindy. This is an episode that should be called The World Way, Way, Way Beyond Belief, because the information you're going to get during these next couple hours is shocking, chilling, and it certainly is going to cause a paradigm shift in the next couple days after you have time to absorb this information. During the first hour, we're going to go over a, an interview that was sent to us, and it's an interview by Max Egan. It's an incredibly uh, chilling interview. Now, Max, we've known Max for a long time, and we've come to know him and trust him. He's helped us get the word out on several things. And this information that you're going to hear in the first hour, I think is critical, so critical that I've devoted the first hour to getting this information out. But I want you to stay for the second hour, because the second hour we have even more, how can I say, uh, paradigm shifting, enlightening, um, well, how would, what would you call it, Mindy? Chilling information coming Certainly in this. Certainly informative. Incredible. Incredible. We've interviewed a man named Jim Fetzer that we all should know, and I should have known about him before. He's a friend of a friend, and I've spent time on his website now. It's incredible. Jim Fetzer, and he's, he, has, he does a thing called the Real Deal Podcast. And, you know, I think our podcast is really perfectly named World Beyond Belief because it just deals with topics that are so out there and so unbelievable. But his podcast called The Real Deal Podcast, man, this guy is so real and he's so informed. He's uh, like a cold shower. This is the kind of interview that you can send to someone who's not even started to awaken yet, and it'll jolt them into something. A sense of reality, perhaps? A, a new sense of reality. So you want to stay tuned for the second hour when we've got an interview with Jim Fetzer. But let's get back to the first hour. This interview was sent to us, and it's by a person named Max Egan. And if you don't know Max Egan, you really should. We've been listening to Max Egan, whose website is thecrowhouse.com, for about seven years. And he is so wonderful because he's been very comforting for us. He's been providing us with wisdom and guidance for a long time. And he's been working tirelessly lately, or over the last year, trying to get some justice, some relief for the Palestinians who are, you know, mercilessly being tortured and slaughtered by the uh, Israelis. He's been trying his best to try to get the word out and try to get some international attention. He probably is one of the people who uh, prompted an international court to find Israel guilty of war crimes in that particular incident. He's a wonderful guy. Also, a few months ago, like five months ago, four months ago, we did an interview with Daniel Smith, who's being uh, prosecuted by the Justice Department now, but in the name of the uh, Federal Food and Drug Administration. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. For uh, selling MMS which is a totally legal substance. The problem with MMS is it cures malaria, Ebola, cancer, and too many things that would interfere with the, the business plans for the pharmaceutical industry. So Max helped us get the word out on him. And if you haven't watched that interview, go back and watch our interview with Daniel Smith. You can find it on YouTube on the Pinecone Utopia channel, which is our channel. And uh, watch that interview because he's still is in jeopardy. He's still 
standing up for all of us in terms of this fight for medical Our freedom. freedoms. Right. The freedom to choose to treat ourselves however we want to. Right. With things that are actually effective. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> also, another delightful part of this first interview is it's done on Truth Frequency Radio by Chris and Cherie. And Chris calls them the, the twin flames, or at least he did several years ago. We, I started listening to them when we lived in Colorado. And they're very, uh, very interesting, very informative. And we've listened, you know, when, you, when you've listened to people who are awakening for a long time, we are, we're all awakening together. So it's interesting to listen to them become more and more sophisticated as we became more and more sophisticated as other podcasters and commentators have become more and more sophisticated. I also recommend their their podcast. But they did a great job and, and Max wanted to come forward with this information that he got from a friend, a banker friend. And I think it'll be it'll be very informative. Now for this whole show, I want you just to buckle in because this is uh, revealing information, shocking information. You might want to get a, a pencil and paper because there are some dates and concepts involved you might want to learn in both of these interviews. Uh, the first one with Max Egan and the second with Jim Fetzer. So without further ado, let's start the interview with Max Egan. After we do, the, after we play the interview, I'll come back and Mindy and I'll chat about it a little bit because it, it's it's uh, the kind of information that you need to integrate, to absorb, integrate, and and think about. We've been working on it for the last couple of days. Okay, so here we are. This is Max Egan on Truth Frequency Radio. Without any further ado, coming all the way from down under to join us last minute this evening. It is our dear friend, Max Egan, from The Crow House. Max, how are you doing, sir? Oh, good, Chris. Thanks for having me on, brother. Always a pleasure to come and talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us last minute. And you're absolutely right. Uh, there is There are a lot of distractions out there. There are a lot of different types of understandings uh, that people are, are walking down uh, different rabbit holes, some that it may lead somewhere, some that, some that may not. But the main focus right now, as we discussed off air, should be what's going on in the physical realm right now, the Jade Helm situation, for instance, because it seems like we're on the verge of a complete and total takeover, not to uh, be an alarmist or anything like that. But you convinced me after speaking to you for the, the last hour that something big is going on. So take us away anywhere you'd like. Well, it's just really interesting. You, know, you, you look at the, the situation. We've all been expecting something. We've all been waiting for the big event. And like you say, there's been so much uh, crying wolf over the last seven years, economic crashes right around the corner, all this stuff, you know. And um, <clears throat> so people are kind of desensitized to it now. But I've been looking at uh, what's been going on with Jade Helm, as many have. I mean, it's a very interesting exercise, you know. But you look at what it is. Jade Helm is an extraction and reintegration exercise. So the fact that it's extraction and reintegration would, would indicate that they're not, not taking, not interested in extracting whole suburbs. It's certain maybe key individuals, maybe key figures, maybe gun owners, maybe activists, whatever. And reintegration would indicate they're, they're changing them in some way and putting them back into society or whatever. I don't know. But extraction and reintegration <clears throat> would indicate that a change takes place when they extract people. So this is all very interesting in itself that they would be running an exercise like that. But when you look at, um, Jade Helm, Jade Helm's running for six months, which puts it ending around about the middle of September. So and then you've got the closing of the Walmarts. And the closing of the Walmarts is unprecedented. This is really weird stuff because Walmart is a, is a money-making machine. You know, if you've got a plumbing problem in Walmart, they're going to fix that pretty quick. You know, you're going to close it at 5 o'clock and they're going to have the plumbers in there at 5.05 and they're going to be working on that and getting that back online so they can start making money out of the American people because that's what it's for. Well, there's a chance they wouldn't even close the whole store anyways. I, I've seen so much construction going on at these large super stores that uh, the whole plumbing idea is a complete farce. Uh, anybody can see that. Exactly. It's a, it's a farce. It's a joke. So, I mean, you know what Walmart is. It's a, it's a money machine. That's what it's for. So, you know, the fact that they're going to close them for six months is interesting because it puts it to the middle of September. 
You know, now the Walmarts can be used as military posts. I think a lot of people know this. This should be out there. Most of the community listening to this by now should know that um, all Walmarts can be converted to military posts. They're actually set up that way. I believe the um, the ordering system, the logistics system, the type of net they use or the communication system they've got set up is, I think it piggybacks off the military. I'm not sure. I couldn't guarantee that, but I think it's the same setup so that if the internet goes down, Walmarts have still got communication. They can still order arms. They can get just about anything through Walmart. I mean, they've got this ordering and, and logistic setup that they can you can get anything through a Walmart. So I think they're all piggybacking off each other as well. And this has all been set up. Now, very interestingly, in Yemen, the whole conflict in Yemen, the U.S. Special Forces were called in there to help in the conflict in Yemen, which was completely unnecessary. There's no reason for this conflict to have happened. And uh, when the U.S. Special Forces went in, the first thing they did was commandeered the Walmarts and set them up as military outposts and military posts, C2 command centers. So they've just run a test in Yemen and take the Special Forces in there, see how they set these things up in, a, in an actual war zone, run a, run a live test. This appears to be what's just happened in Yemen. Apart from anything else that's going on there, it would appear that they've just run a live test in Yemen to commandeer the Walmarts and run operations out of them. So now, wait a minute. Let me let me jump in for just a moment because I want people to fully understand what Max is saying here. Uh, you're saying that they have been running these same kind of practice drills in Yemen, where they're shutting down the WalMarts and taking them over as military operational points. Yes, yes, wow. they've been doing that in Yemen. U.S. Special Forces have been doing that just in these last couple of weeks. That's why the U.S. Special Forces have gone in there. I believe for whatever reason they did go in there. What they did when they arrived was they commandeered the Walmarts and set them up as the C2 command centers in a live war zone situation. Right? So they've just done a live test. They've just run this whole operation. Now, you look at America. America is uh, in, in great financial difficulty. Basically, all of America is owned by China. Forget it. I mean, America's gone if you look at it economically because the bill to China is, is astronomical. This bill can never, ever be paid. You could sell, you could dig up every resource in America, sell every computer, every piece of machinery, every blade of grass, every drop of water, and every person to the highest bidder, and you still wouldn't pay off anywhere near the debt that they have just to China alone. So China owns America. That's the way it is. And you look at the operation, Jade Helm. Jade looks towards China, doesn't it? Jade Helm. Even if this operation was to go live, Jade Helm, you've got to wonder whether they would be bringing Chinese troops in to do it. So uh, look at the other connections with China. Um, I'm, I've been looking at all this and finding it all very interesting that all this is going on. And I've been speaking to some people lately, and, and someone that I've met is a banker. And he's, he's not, a, um, not an international banker, he doesn't, you know, not, not, not a conglomerate or anything, he just owns a chain of banks, he owns a lot of islands, he owns a, a lot of stuff, he's a very wealthy man. And he's got through the whole thing and he's gone, well, I've gone through this whole corporate system and, and there's nothing here, it, it's a joke, you know, it was all for nothing. Max, before the break you were speaking about your friend who's a banker, very, very wealthy, very, very successful financially. But uh, once he got to the end of the road, he realized there was nothing there. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, he, he doesn't know himself. You know, he's got all this stuff. I mean, the world's his oyster. He can go anywhere he wants and do anything he wants, but he's just saying, well, what's it all for? What was it all for? You know, I, I don't know who I am. You know, and, and all I did along the way was sit in this office and consolidate all these numbers on the screen, but they can be taken at any moment. It's, it's not about that. Life isn't about the accumulation of stuff. Now, he actually, he actually came to, to do uh, an ayahuasca ceremony with a friend of mine. Is, is, and when he did the ceremony, he just went, wow, yeah, um, that's what it's all about. And, uh, to, to think that there's a banker that was that, you know, so wealthy and so disconnected from reality that he, he even came to do ayahuasca. You know, so that's quite amazing. But what he said to me was that, um, through this whole thing, all, all the banking community, they're not talking about if the crash is going to happen. They're talking about when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. They know it has to happen. There's no way the U.S. can maintain its uh, its position as the world's uh, reserve currency because the U.S. dollar isn't worth anything. You know, And the fact that it's a global currency, a global reserve currency, it's creating all sorts of problems all around the globe. All the wars, all the stuff that America's doing, it's, it's all because of this 
It's, it's the global reserve currency, and it can do all this stuff. But what's going on on, on September the 20th, the, uh, this man told me, or no, September the 10th, there's a very good possibility, and I, I don't know the right wording. I'm not a financial, and I can't remember the exact wording he used, but there's a possibility that, that China's going to either float a new currency or it's going to uh, foreclose on its loan or it's going to take over as the global reserve currency. And when that happens, you're going to see a complete crash of the Western economic system, which means everybody's dollars are going to be worth nothing. And if they announce that on September the 10th, then on September the 11th this year, people will wake up, the banks are closed, their dollars are worth nothing, and the whole system's been locked down. And at that point, Jade Helm could go live, and they've got it all ready set up to do. If, if this happens on September this year, then... Suddenly, there's going to be riots in the streets. There's going to be um, people, and a lot of angry people, wondering why the supermarkets are closed, wondering why there's no food. And it could turn into an absolute, you know, it could turn into a very, very chaotic situation. And if that happens, then they're going to need to have all of this in place to lock it all down. And it's not just going to be the United States. It'll be the whole whole Western system. I heard you talking in our, in our discussion um, before we came on air, that I will, it's, it's amazing I've just moved to this place and I'm right across the river from Canada and I'll be able to get to Canada. Well, in Canada, there's an operation running called Operation Maple Resolve, which has seen the closure of 133 Target stores right across America, right across Canada. And there are actually more troops involved in Operation Maple Resolve than there are in Operation Jade Helm. So it's the whole North American continent that this will affect and, and possibly... I don't know how, how it will go with England, but it'll probably affect a lot of stuff over here as well. We've just seen um, uh, metadata and data retention laws come in in Australia, and of course they trap everybody with the uh, the Game of Thrones release that everybody downloaded. So now they've got everybody's addresses who is pirating and all of this sort of stuff. So now they can use this as an excuse to be going uh, to people's homes, and it won't just be for pirating; they'll just be confiscating computers, and they'll know where all the activists are and all this sort of stuff. So. They're getting pre- prepared to lock it all down. I mean, we've really pushed them to this. Things like Rebecca Roth's book, people are waking up now. This, you know, the, the sheer horror of the fact that these are the people who carried out 9-11. And when people wake up to this, they're going to be marching down the street with pitchforks and ropes wanting to lynch these people. I mean, seriously. Uh, they've, they've done some terrible stuff. And while this has all been set up, we've seen the, this Zionist influence in the American government. All, all the, the people that are affecting American foreign policy have been channeling billions and billions and billions of dollars and massive amounts of weapons out of the country and into the Middle East. They're getting everything out of the country as quickly as they can. And it's significant that they've closed all these Walmarts because Walmarts are a money-making machine, and it seems incongruous that they would have closed down these Walmarts if they weren't preparing to take this operation live, you know. And like I said, it's across Canada as well, Operation Maple Resolve. You can look that up. And the fact that they've just been running a test case in Yemen. And look, I'm not one to fear monger. I'm not. I've, I've... come on the air for eight years and I've been politely, quietly, calmly asking people to please wake up and pay attention to what's going on around them. And when I look at this, you know, I'm looking at all this and I'm looking at all this research and all this stuff's happening. And out of the blue, I meet a banker at an ayahuasca ceremony who tells me to look out for the date September the 10th. Right out of the blue, just synchronistic. And I don't know anybody else that's talking about this date. All these financial gurus that are out there, the, the Gerald Salentes and the, the others that are out there, telling all about this stuff and trends and all this stuff. Why isn't anyone talking about this date? If this is what the entire banking community in Australia is talking about and these people, these financial gurus, have ties to bankers and banking interests, obviously, if they, they can do what they're doing, why aren't they talking about this date? It's a very it good seems point. Very, it seems very, very significant. And a lot of these financial gurus and these, these speculators have been screaming out fear for the last seven years and they've desensitized everybody. They've been crying wolf for so long. That everyone's going, yeah, yeah, financial crash, financial crash, yeah, yeah, we know it's coming one day. Well, what if it's right around the corner? And what if this is what it is? See, even with, with Jade Helm and uh, Operation uh, Maple Resolve, they're, they're saying, oh, this is a perfect scenario for a false flag. Everyone's waiting for a false flag, waiting for a suitcase new to go off, waiting for a, a new fake bin Laden attack or whatever. But what if the, the, it isn't a false flag? What if it's a complete crash of the financial system. I mean, the false flag is, is, is the fact that people believe money is worth something anyway. It's an interesting mind control. Suddenly they can switch the value off and tell you it's worth nothing. You wake up and go, oh, my God, this money in my wallet now is just useless paper. Well, it was before. 
you know, but now they've told you it is, so it is, you know. And, you know, it's just, the thing is, what can we do about it? We don't want it to elapse into revolution and all this sort of stuff. If, if, if people can unite and stand up now and call this for what it is, we can circumvent the whole thing. This is what I've been trying to say with, with some of my recent shows, you know. That was amazing. Where, where was I? Uh, we were talking about how this could potentially be a, a worldwide situation and um, this time is ripe for a, a takeover because of the Chinese debt. Yeah, well, the thing is, the thing is like they've, they've done it with the metadata law here so they can track everybody here. And uh, this will be for all the activists and stuff. See, look, we've been waiting for this for a long time. The whole truth community has been waiting for this for a long time. And uh, there's been so many people crying wolf. But, you know, I've been telling people to wake up and, and do this, you know, really pay attention for a long time. And I put out a show recently called A Plea for Sanity where I, I just asked everybody in the truth movement to, to just put all their stuff down for the moment and, and unite. We need to unite. There's a lot of us here. There's a lot of people in the truth community. There's a lot of people who know that the government's corrupt and they know that you know, everyone's expecting the big event. But everyone's so focused on their own research and on their own rabbit holes that they can't see the forest for the trees. They're not paying attention to what's going on right around them right now. And look, I respect everybody's research. I've been down all the rabbit holes. I've been down so many for 40 years. But it doesn't matter what you're researching. If, if you're researching the Jesuits, if you're researching ETs, if you're researching the Flat Earth, if you're researching anything, if you could just put it aside for the moment and we could all unite our voices and stand up to address this situation, we can circumvent it. But if we don't, then we're, we're going to reap what we, what we haven't sown. You well, know, I think like, the biggest um, problem, Max, is that most people just simply don't know what to do. I mean, I'll, me personally, I just I feel like I need to brace myself. I feel like no matter what I do, there's nothing that we can do to change or move the entire mountain unless we each pick up a stone individually. But the problem is there's so many stones and so many people who are not picking up the stones, we can't possibly pick up the slack. So all we can do is just brace ourselves unless you have a better solution. Well, the thing is, you know, I've been saying that we, we've still got opportunities to, to get them within their own fiction. If enough people can stand up and see this for what it is, I mean, all, all of the, the Department of Homeland Security stuff that's going on in the United States, any removal of habeas corpus, any attempt to remove habeas corpus from the legal system is abuse of office and treason. You know, and you've got to stand up and call the government out for what it is. They're all in abuse of office, and you need to express a loss of confidence in them and have them dismissed. There's got to be people, there's got to be lawyers, there's got to be somebody who can get the ball rolling at least to get the attention of the people to what's going on because, you know, the U.S. has been taken over from within. It has this whole Zionist influence, which is ultimately controlled by the banking cartels that are running the whole show. They have gone and they've milked all the wealth out of the country and now they're just going to let the place implode. See, Western society, Western society has been created and it's been put out there and people have been kept distracted with toasters and, and toaster ovens and TVs and fashion and all the, the rubbish that they've been fed. And they've been taught that this is freedom and that success is about consolidating the power of the system, get into a company and make it more efficient, discard as much humanity as you can and maximize profits. This is what life is all about. And not only that, they've been taught that anything that is not like Western society is a threat to Western society. And so we've got to go out and we've got to establish military bases everywhere and protect ourselves from all these people who aren't like us. But it's all it's really been done, it's, it's been done, done to consolidate the power of the system. All they wanted from America was the military hardware they got out of the place and all the military bases they got out of the place. They kept the American people, who are beautiful people, they've kept these people distracted with toys and trinkets while they've milked everything from them and taught them that everybody else is against them and they should fear everybody. And now they're going to implode the whole thing. They don't need Western society anymore. Western society has done its function. It's consolidated the power of the system. And people are saying, oh, this is Russia against America and China against America and all this. At the top, there, there is no countries. There is no us and them. At the top, there's the financial system, which puppeteers the whole thing. And these financial tycoons and barons, they don't care who runs the control. Group. They don't care whether it's America or England or Russia or China or North Korea. They couldn't give a damn who runs the control grid as long as they run the ones who run the control grid by controlling the finances of the place. So... Everyone's waiting for this false flag to happen, but it's not going to be a false flag. It's going to be a financial crash, and we're not going to be able to escape it. If we, if we don't stand up and do something about this now and call this for what it is, because all this debt is fictitious. It's all contrived. It's all built on criminal activity. It's all built on a, a system of debt slavery. And if we stand up and call it for what it is, 
you know, if the American people stood up and did this, they'd inspire the rest of the planet to stand up and do it. They really would. You know, and there's enough people, I believe, in the alternate media, if we all stood up and stood together and made our voices heard, we could, we could reach a lot of people, especially since things like Rebecca's books come out. This has woken up a lot of people. People are seeing things for what they are now, which I believe is half the reason they, they, they've got to do this. They've got to lock it all down now because people are waking up to the fact that this is just this whole fictional slavery system. We're, only, we're just going by what it says in these books, and none of it's real. It's just an idea. You know, we're people on this planet, and if we can put all of our research and our rabbit holes down for the moment and stand up as one united voice, we can make a difference. But if we don't, I mean, like I said, I'm not one to cry wolf. I'm really not. You know, I, I don't um, come out with prophecies of doom. I don't don't tell people bad things are about to happen and all this sort of stuff. But when I look at all of this, and to have this, to meet this banker out of the blue and just give me that date, when I've been looking at all this September stuff, saying what's all this about, and for him to give me that date and say this is what this is what could happen, you know, they may be able to prolong it a little bit past this. But if if China actually does this, and it has every right to do so, I mean, if you want to put it on a you know, on a global stage, it has every right to do it. I mean, America never, ever pays its debt to China, and it, it just keeps, you know, going. So what's the point, you know? So well, they have every me, right to do it. You know? l- let me ask you about the Jewish holiday, or uh, maybe it's Jewish mystic um, time period or something like that. I, I'm not too familiar with this part of it, but uh, you were saying that it ends right in the middle of September. Well, yeah, Shemitah. Shemitah is, uh, is uh, every seven years, it's a cancellation of debt, basically. It's a resetting of, of the financial system, basically. In, it's a Jewish custom how debts used to be cancelled every seven years. We actually used to do it in our society as well. I mean, my mother used to talk about when I was a kid, oh, it's seven years old now, it doesn't mean anything. And this is a Shemitah thing. And Shemitah finishes, I think it's September 13th this year. And every Shemitah year, there's, there's some sort of financial thing that usually happens. In um, in September the 11th in 2001, this was Shemitah was around. I can't. I might not have the date right, but I think it may have been September 16th or something like that. So I can't remember the, the name of the day, but the last day of Shemitah, there's usually something major happens around that. I mean, not all the time, but if it's going to happen, it'll happen around the end of Shemitah, which is in September. And we had September 11th, of course, in 2001. Then we had the financial crash of 2008. And now it's a, it's a Shemitah year again. And this is actually a, a more significant one because it's the, the seventh of the seven-year cycle. So it's to two sevens. It's a, it's a big one. So it's just interesting that it would happen at this time. And when you look at it, this, this whole um, usurous um, Judaic banking system is what, what controls the world. And that's not anything against the Jews. That's simply what the system is. It's this. It's a usury system, and, and usury comes out of the Judaic system. So that's what this banking system is. It is, and I think that's why there's so much focus on Islam because the Islamic banking system forbids um, usury or uh, interest, and they don't want anything to do with that. That that would completely destroy their system. Oh yeah, that's why Islam is such a threat. Right. But, you know, it isn't isn't because of the people. It's because of the the concept of the way they they use money. You can't control people with money. You know, the only reason Islam is and you know Arabic states are controlled by the financial system is because the global financial system is based on this Western model. And if they want to participate, well, they have to get involved. You know, but there's no usury in the uh, in the Arabic money system, no. Max, you talked about this seven-year cycle, the seven-year period where debts are forgiven. It, it's funny because here in the United States, the credit bureaus also dismiss debts after seven years. Uh, if your debt is seven years old, you can have a request to have it knocked off of your credit report, which is kind of funny. Now, I've always known this period to be Jubilee. Is this the same thing, or is Jubilee something different? Look, I think it's something different. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I think it might be something different. Okay. But uh, it could be. Maybe that's – maybe it could be. I mean, it's it's quite possible because, you know, forgiving of debts could – yeah, Jubilee could be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, interesting what you were saying, the credit union doing that. See, it all goes back to the same thing. It's, it's, this shows you that it's all based on this Judaic system, you know. That's the money system that we use. But, look, with, with getting back to Jade Helm and all of this, you know, it, it just seems really interesting that they're doing this with the targets across Canada and that all of this is en- aiming for September. And um, you see the lockdown of, of uh, criticism we've had in France, the lockdown we've had in Spain. Over here, with, with what they're doing to the data retention laws, there's also been a thing which was just actually posted on, on my Facebook page by a friend, uh, Mel Ryan, lovely lady. She's actually the lady who 
Um, took me to Peru the first time I went. A lovely, lovely woman. I don't see her nearly enough. But um, if you're listening, Mal, I'll up to you. She posted a thing on the Facebook that actually they're banning any criticism of the Prime Minister by any other politicians in the country. You're not allowed to criticise the Prime Minister. And if you have a blog in a different name or whatever, they're going to trace you. And if you're a public servant and you're criticising the PM, you'll be sacked. So <laughs> they're banning any criticism. Criticism, And this is happening everywhere. It's, it's, they're cracking down on free speech. And they're doing everything they can. And, and looking at all of this, people would say, look, okay, well, this happens and Jade Helm goes live. Well, okay, in America here, we've got, we've got the Patriots, we've got all this sort of stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to coordinate, we'll be able to do, you know, get ourselves together and we'll, we'll resist. But it's going to be difficult, you know, because they've taken down all the analog networks and all they've got now is digital networks. And we've seen a huge escalation in mobile towers all around the world. And you've got a lot of conspiracy theorists saying, oh, these are to, to make us negative energy and all this sort of stuff. Well, there's probably a fair bit of truth in that. But what they can also do with the towers is they can lock down certain areas. They can send out jamming signals and they can lock down areas. There's a town nearby, about 60, 50 or 60 miles away from here, called Nimbin, which is a, a hippie town, you know, pot smokers and weed signs everywhere. And lately they've been having uh, teams of police coming up from Sydney and raiding the place kind of reasonably regularly. And when they do it, and these aren't the normal police that normally live in the town and sort of turn a blind eye to it all. These are you know, militarised police come up from Sydney with all their SUVs and stuff, and they jam the signal in the area so that nobody in the area can use their phones. They can't alert anybody else in the area that the police are raiding the place. They can't get any signals out, and they can't get any signals in. And if they're, they're using their phones and trying to, well, their phones are still on. They're still sending out a signal and letting... The, uh, everybody know where they are. Every 45 seconds, your phone sends out a signal to um, triangulate your position. So they can lock down suburbs. If, if they go live with Jade Helm or with Maple Resolve, they can lock down certain suburbs where, where they're going live. They can take care of that suburb and do it kind of one at a time. And there's no way for anybody within these suburbs to be able to alert anybody else that, hey, the, the military at door because they've locked down the digital network. You know, so... It, it, all of this stuff is in place. And like I said, I'm not one to fear monger. Uh, if, if anybody who's listened to my shows over the eight, last eight years, they know that I'm not one to come on and cry wolf and say bad things are happening. But when I look at all of the dominoes that are in place for this to happen, and then suddenly out of the blue I hear from a completely unrelated source that nobody's talking about, who's a, a person who I respect, who's actually a no, who's in the banking community, and he gives me that date, I just, you know, I felt responsible to um, come and talk about it. I, I think, you know, I have a certain responsibility to, to mention this because if this does go live, it, it could turn into absolute chaos, you know, and we have an opportunity to circumvent it before it does because you, you don't want to be in a civil war. You don't want to be in a revolution. You don't want to be in any of those things. You don't want this to come to that. I mean, look at Yemen. Yemen was a people's revolution, basically, was what it was. And look what they did to that place. Right. That's what they do to people's revolutions. They don't care about the people. You've got people have got to stop thinking, oh, our government wouldn't do this and you know and even with nine eleven, when you look at nine eleven, you look at the information that came out in Rebecca Roth's book about just how many major companies were involved, how many corporate interests were involved, and you've got all of Blackwater, you've got a whole bunch of people that that were involved in this. I mean, this is a huge cover up, but there were a lot of people involved in it. There's a lot of people who are quite happy to do whatever they can to uh, escape the wrath of the people. And these, unfortunately, are the people who are in control of most of the surveillance grid and most of the police forces and all this sort of stuff. And I mean, The great hope is that the police and the National Guard and the military won't turn against their people, but then you've got to, you've got to really add the realistic possibility that it may not be American troops. It could be Chinese troops. I mean, Operation Jade Helm, what is this about, Jade Helm? Why are we talking about Chinese? I mean, this sounds like Chinese soldiers to me, Jade Helm. So, I mean, I, I might be wrong, and I hope that I am. I really, really hope that I'm wrong about all of this. But I, I can't help but just put it out there and ask people to consider the power that we could have if we all put down our respective rabbit holes for the moment and address this situation in, in a positive way. Stand up and, and call it for what it is and start asking questions loudly. You know, don't don't get aggro, don't get aggressive, but just start asking the right questions as publicly and loudly as possible and asking for answers because if your government is, is hiding things from you, 
You're not going to. It isn't acceptable. You. I, I keep saying to the people, the, the American people, the Australian people, all, all the people of all, all of your countries out there. What what makes up your country? What makes up the nation of America? It's the people. You are the nation. If you take the people out of America, what do you got? You got a bunch of land. It, 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 it's nothing. It's not a country. It's not a. It's not a community. It's not a society. It's 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 not America. It's just a, a block of land that someone will come and do something with. It's the people that are the nation. Therefore, if your government is, is putting steps in place which are preventing the people from holding your government accountable for their actions, this is abusive office and it's treason. It's a threat to national security because the people of the nation cannot be secure if the people that they employ to manage their infrastructure for them are putting in rules in place which are preventing the people from any, any ability to be able to hold these public servants accountable for their actions. Remember, your president swears to serve the people and protect the Constitution, as do all of your politicians and all of your military and all of your police. All of these people swear to do this thing that they are not doing, and they're not doing it because the people have forgotten that they are the nation, and any threat to them being able to control the actions of their government is therefore a threat to national security. We've got to turn the tables and, and put ourselves back into the equation. Stop thinking we're little people and we're ruled by these governments. These governments are our employees that are there to manage infrastructure for us. And if we call them out, they have nowhere to go. And there's a lot of people who work within the government systems and a lot of people in the military and the police who are going to see the sense of this if it's brought to them in the right way. You know, you've got people that are working within a psychopathic system, but a lot of the people in the lower tiers aren't psychopaths. They've just been trained to think without empathy because they're thinking, uh, they're operating in a business, in a corporate world with a corporate mentality. So it's all about numbers on the screen and balancing the books and getting the digits right and, and making all the numbers work. It's not about people. But these people, a lot of them aren't psychopaths. They, they, they've got empathy. They go home. They love their dog. They love their wife. They love their children. They love their neighbors. A lot of them are good people. They're just caught up in the wheels of the system. But if, if the reality is presented to them in, in, a, in a real enough way and a polite and eloquent enough way, you know, if you're angry out there, channel that anger into calm action based in love for humanity in what you're doing. I, I don't even hate these people. I don't hate the psychopaths that are doing what they're doing. They know what, they don't know what they're doing. They, they have no empathy. It's the way we treat animals and cattle and sheep and ants. It's, it's not like they hate you or they're evil. They just have no empathy. It's all about the system to them. They don't think the way we do. Right. That's why psychopaths are. So you can't hate them. You've got to do what you do out of love for humanity and stand up and call it for what it is. We can do this. If we stand up together, we can do it. I really believe it, Chris. And this is a huge opportunity for us to do so. And if we don't, if we let this happen, you know, it, it could go somewhere very bad from here. And all the dominoes are in place. And like I said, I'm not one to come and cry wolf. I, I don't like to spread fear, but I, I feel obligated to talk about this because we've all been waiting for the big event there's been so many people crying wolf for so long, but the dominoes have never really been in place. Everyone's thinking it's going to be a false flag. Well, what if it isn't? What if it's this uh, this financial system and, and the ability it has to destroy us you know, and what we're doing? You know? Very well said. Max, give us the websites real quick where people can learn more. My website is thecrowhouse.com. You can go there, find out everything that I do, and that you'll find out everything on there. And uh, Full Circle Project as well, which you'll find a link to that there, which I want to watch this, watch this year. Max, I do want to ask you this because it seems very strange to me that they would just decide to close eight Walmarts, and that's the ones that we've heard of, simultaneously and overnight, literally with only an hour notice to the employees, just everybody leave, get out of here, etc. Wouldn't they do this a little more quietly? Because it seems like they're really making, uh, they're really trying to raise panic in this situation. Well, yeah, it keeps the conspiracy theorists going, you see. Everyone's looking for the false flag and everyone's calling it for what it isn't. And you know, everyone's waiting, waiting, and waiting, and they'll call it, they'll call it, they'll call it, and then six months down the track from now, everyone will be, oh yeah, well nothing happened. And then on September the tenth or September the eleventh, it can go live when China announces out of the blue. Gee, look, nobody expected this, did they? Wow, right out of left field. Well, here in the United States, everybody has a gun, and the, those that don't have guns, their neighbors have several guns, and so their neighbors will start sharing their guns amongst each other, and so. 
essentially, they're talking about invading the world's largest army because we really are here in the United States. Now, the question is, are people going to get up and stand up and fight? Now, uh, if there was a Red Dawn type situation, yeah, absolutely. And maybe that's what they're trying to provoke by uh, creating a Red Dawn type situation where you have somebody somewhere that uh, s- creates an aggressive act to really bring in martial law. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, there's, there's many, many ways they could play it, Chris. Many, many ways. I mean, they could go in, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, suburb by suburb. They could do it, you know, lock down the digital network. They, they'd do it at three or four o'clock in the morning. They'll, if they're going to go to your house, that's when it'll be. It'll be, you know, well, well, when you're asleep. And you'll be, you'll be groggy, you'll wake up and they'll, you'll be, you know, a whole bunch of people already there. So. You know, there's many ways they could do it. They they may want to provoke it into anything. But you think about it, if you if you shut down the money system and within three days the supermarket shelves are empty, you can just leave it. It'll implode on its own. You know, and look, you could get even more esoteric about it. There's all sorts of weaponry these people have got that that we don't know about. Uh, look at 9-11. Look at some of Judy Wood's work on 9-11. I've, I've got to tell people I, I respect Judy Wood's analysis of what happened to the Twin Towers on 9-11. I think that is the only um, probable uh, way that happened. And that indicates that there's there's all sorts of weaponry and all sorts of stuff that we don't know about. So, you know, revolution in, in this sort of a, a situation, it, it could go any way. It could go any way at all. You know, but I think um, they don't really care. It, you know, they don't really care. Western society can implode now. They don't need it. They've already got all the military hardware. They've milked every single bit of wealth out of the United States like three or four times over so that it can never possibly ever get out of the position that it's in. So, you know, the United States, as we know it, is virtually gone. It's only there in name now. And what you're seeing now is, is the, uh, the rats uh, scuttling from the sinking ship and uh, just getting as much of the of the wealth of the country out of there as they can, you know. But I think we can still circumvent it. We can. You know, I mean, I'd hate to see it degrade to this. And, yeah, I mean, there's so many guns in America. Who knows w- what it could be? Who knows how it could go? But, I mean, you know, I don't know if EM pulses will help with any of that sort of stuff either. I mean, there's probably all sorts of things they could do. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a gun person. I don't know. I'm just looking at it and thinking, you know, it's not looking good for all of this stuff to be coming down right around the planet here in Australia, France, Spain, right across Europe. Uh, God knows what they're doing in England, but there's also the, the police there are getting pretty out of control as well. And Canada and America with Jade Helm and Maple Resolve and uh, what they just did in Yemen, this Chinese financial system, it just all points to something really big at the end of this year. And I think we we have uh, an opportunity to heal it if we can if we can arouse enough people. And things like Rebecca's book, there's 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 a lot of stuff now. There's a lot of tools we've got that can cut through the matrix very very quickly for people, and just help them see things for what they are. And if we could put down our rabbit holes and unite as you know, the whole alternate movement needs to unite. This is what it's all been about. It's all been leading to this point, and we've all been waiting for the big event. And I, I really believe it's coming. Like I said, I'm not a fear monger. I'm not, I don't do this. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't feel in my heart that something something rather large is about to go down. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I just feel obligated to talk about it. And, I, and I'd love to see everybody put all their stuff down and all stand up and as, as one voice. I believe if we will, there's enough people who work within the system that will stand up with us. I realize it's actually only a small group of people that are running this whole show. There's still a lot of good people in the police and the military and even in our governments. There's a lot of good politicians in there that entered the, the business because they want to make a difference. You know, there's, there's a lot of good people in this system. And, you know, there, there's a lot of us here and we can stand up and call it for what it is. The whole thing's been a scam anyway. And the whole thing is about consolidating the control grid. It's not about wealth. It's not about money. It's not even really about resources. It's about consolidating the control grid, you know. So, you know, pay attention, people. Pay attention. But, you know, like if um, get a passport, folks. If you're an American, you haven't got a passport, at least get yourself a ticket out of the country, you know. And if things are looking, you know, if we haven't created some real difference by, by late August, why don't we just go on a holiday out of the country for a while, you know. Get out while you can. It seems like a catch-22 for them because, on one hand, if they use American troops, it's going to be that much more difficult for an American troop to fire 
upon American citizens. I I know a lot of them say they would, and we have seen some of them actually do that, but I would say the majority may not when it, when push comes to shove. However, if they send in foreign troops, Chinese troops, UN peacekeeping troops, every militia out there is going to see that as fair game, and I do as well. That's To me, if we have Chinese troops or Russian troops or whatever, UN peacekeeping troops, that's an invading army. And that is our right to stand up and fight against that invading army, regardless of whether the federal government says that they're here for our own benefit or not. Yeah, well, you know, look, you look at the actions of the police lately. These guys don't care. They're brutal. They're absolutely brutal. And you look at what happens in a war zone, in any war zone, rapes, murders, pillaging. You know, in a war zone, the worst in everybody comes out. And when you get people of Western society who have been so mentally and psychologically brutalized, so sexually repressed, with what they've done to us through the repression of our sexuality and the, the disconnect they've done to our sexuality, this is a huge, huge part of the control grid that people ignore because sex is a taboo topic. They don't talk about it. Sex is as natural as eating, sleeping, or breathing, but right. we don't look at it in, in the normal way. Right. Murder, <laughs> murder is and, more and, acceptable in society than sex is. Exactly, and and when you get a situation that develops into a war zone, which is what it would do, if it if it came to that, where it was the citizens battling against Blackwater or military, then the military and the Blackwater and all these it becomes a big boys club, and they do what they do, and the worst comes out in everybody. It happens in all revolutions, right down the track. It doesn't matter how much integrity you think certain people may have. They get desensitized, you know. There'd be people who stand up and won't, won't participate, but there'll be many, many others who do. And there are a lot of guilty parties in America. And America has been created to create a, a lot of internal hatred, a lot of, lot of repressed people in America that really want an outlet. And there's a lot of guns. And there's a lot of people who don't care, you know, and they just see it as dog eat dog. And what it could turn into could be, could be terrible. It could be really terrible, and you don't want to be in a war zone, any type of war zone. There's no winners in a civil war. There's no winners in a revolution. There's no winners in any of this. Spot on, Max. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Love you, brother. Well, that was it. Um, I hope that you got everything down. <laughs> Let's go over a few of the things that Max covered during his talk. First of all, I want to tell you that Max, as far as I know, has never made any kind of prediction at all before. He doesn't predict. What he does generally in his podcasts, and um, you can find him at thecrowhouse.com, are he tell he, he gives you the the big overview of what's happening, and then talks to you person to person with some good deep wisdom, and it's really very comforting. This type of predicting or getting the word out on something like this, this is very, very not like Max. Let's go over some of the things that he said. First of all, he was talking about the Walmarts in Yemen. I guess Walmart, I guess this tells us that this has nothing to do actually with the American government or any kind of government. It has everything to do with bankers and corporations working together to to master the human domain, to get things under control. Remember last week we talked about mastering the human domain and the only people who refer to us as humans are people who aren't humans? That's right. So we're being mastered by some external type of entity that we talk about all the time here on World Beyond Belief because it's so beyond belief, the fact that there's another, there's another predatory species that's... That's working with us. Anyway, a couple things that I wrote down. First of all, it's an ex extraction and reintegration drill. Now, why we as Americans need, need to be extracted and reintegrated? Um, that's a good question. Into the new world order. Get rid of the ones that won't go along with it and re-educate the remaining population so that they're, what, more docile than they already right. are? They're more and asleep than they already are. Go along with the agenda. That's amazing. The agenda for the 21st century. 
if you're not familiar with the UN's Agenda 21, you might want to be, because that might help you to understand why and how this could possibly be happening. Right. Look up Rosa Corey, K-O-I-R-E. That's correct. And her book is called Behind the Green Mask. But just do a few of her interviews first to get a little bit of... That's a good idea. Yeah. About interview 21. Also, he goes into the fact that America is owned by China. Now, when I first heard Jade Helm, the first thing I thought of was China. Because Jade is naturally associated with China. Right. And China at the helm. This is coming forward with the fact that China does own the United States. Does own everything in the United States. And is just coming forward to take its property. You know that there are globalists that live in China, notably Ted Turner. Mm -hmm. So they might know something about what's going on in China. Now, you know the reason that they like China is because China is the ideal kind of pre-Hunger Games kind of setup. It's a slave state where people are only given certain information and uh, everything is censored, and people are regarded as slaves. And that's the model they want to use for the rest of the world. And free people like Americans, relatively free people like Americans, the most free people in history probably, uh, have to be extracted and reintegrated to fit the Chinese model. Mm, big sigh. Yeah. Also, we talked about the collapse, and if it's it's not just if, but it's when, and it, that's pretty obvious. I mean, once you get so far in debt that even your resources can't pay off your debt, well, then your creditor just takes you over, and right. that's what's happening. I mean, the fact that they're putting it off till September is, or they're, well, we're going to find out in the, in the next hour. Well, I think Jim. Jim's comment was, oh, well, if not sooner. Right, yeah. if not sooner. So that's happening, and don't think that you can get in, go into Canada because they are having Operation Maple Resolve, Canada, which is the same thing. And uh, that's, that's interesting. What I thought was the most shocking piece of this was that the globalists no longer need Western civilization. And that's, I mean, Western civilization, when you, when you study history in, in high school and college, you study the history of Western civilization. Uh, I wanted to study about, uh, about the Orient, and I had two in my graduate school programs pick out special courses uh, in the history of Asia. I was very interested in that, but it's not available here because we're focused on Western civilization. Western civilization is what, you know, created the, uh, the trade system and created uh, the Magna Carta and the Constitution and all these wonderful things that were freeing to people. Western civilization has created everything that we know as our culture. And to think for one minute or to entertain the thought that it would go away because it was no longer needed, because it interfered with the control system, it's the kind of thing that you kind of have to sit back and just think about for a while. No Western civilization, just a control system where you have, well, they're not even going to be oligarchs anymore. They're just going to be, they'll probably come out as what they really are, which are are Satanists controlling the entire civilization, and it'll be in uh, ideally a Hunger Game kind of thing because the Hunger Games seems to glorify that kind of a thing. I know it sounds horrible, but Hunger Games, I think Hunger Games is a great characterization that allows people to live, they had enough freedom they could sneak out and hunt, they could, they had some measure of freedom. The way the control system will put it in this time, it's a technocratic control system. So your thoughts will not only be your own. 
Your body certainly is not your own. Your body will be you know, harvested for parts, used to create more uh, more people for them to do whatever they want to with, I suppose, ritually torture. Uh, they like to do that. Uh, children, they like to, they're pedophiles, so they'll like to do that with children. Mm. So I see a Hunger Games as like glorifying this horrible situation that we're riding into. But maybe I'm being a little bit too negative. But think about no Western civilization. It's almost very difficult to conceptualize for me what that could be like. Right. It's going to be almost a, uh, like we're going to be cattle and they're going to be the farmers. And, you know, they right now they have no regard for our lives, uh, certainly not our freedom. And so it'll be... And they all follow Aleister Crowley's credo, do what thou wilt. Right. So which is what they intend to do with us and are trying to do with us even now. Right. It's not for us to do what, thou, what right. we will. Right, it's for them, <laughs> them to do. We're going to do what we're told or we're going to be ELF, low-frequency electro waves. Right, right. Uh, the weaponry be... they have is just absolutely atrocious and it is already being used on many people. Who are already being targeted. Right. But I want to remind you, even though we're going to give you, this is heavy information, and in the next hour will be heavy information too. This is a spiritual battle. I think it's a spiritual battle of good against evil. Maybe I'm too black and white. Maybe I'm too uh, hard and cold on that. But I think it's a spiritual battle. I think it's being played out on a uh, physical plane. We have to play physically, but we have to remember that we're fall, we have the moral high ground. We're uh, the, we follow moral law, natural law. We do what's right. We defend freedom. We defend people's right not to be violated by other, by other people. We're standing up. We're on the right side. It's all that matters is that we're on the right side. We'd love to win. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But what really matters is that we're, we're on the right side and we're doing everything we can to wake people up and get people on our side. And I think there's a lot of things now. We have a heads up of what's happening over the summer and into the fall, into September. And there's a lot of time now if this word can get out, there's a lot of time for us to do things, to prepare. We might be able to slow it down. We were able to slow down. Look at all the things that we were able to do recently. We were able to put the Ebola thing on hold. Uh, we're battling vaccines more successfully outside the United States than inside the United States, I think. Of course, not in right. third world. We have world. certainly slowed down their agenda to make vaccines mandatory. Right. And They're see, still working at it, but right. we and have had some effect. I mean, we are powerful. And when we come from a state of love, we're much more powerful. You would, you would think we would be. Well, we are. We are. There's no doubt about it. Now, false flags, and you'll hear about them in the second hour, False flags are uncovered while they happen. Uh, the cabal, the satanic overlords cannot even pull a false flag without being aware of what's going on and really being alerted to it. I think we're making great progress. And the reason they have to bring, bring this thing down now is because we're waking up. If they don't do it now, they'll never be able to do it. So let's continue to wake up. Hey, and welcome back to Hour 2, World Beyond Belief. I hope we're all still buckled in from our Max Egan interview and that those revelation after revelation. Now we're going to interview 
another person. This is Jim Fetzer. Now Jim Fetzer has, he's an ex-Marine. He's written 30 books. He's an extremely clear and fast thinker, so buckle in for this. This is a lot of information that's going to come out in this interview. We interviewed him on this topic, Jade Helm, and I think this interview is incredibly informative. This is the kind of interview you can turn anybody on to, and it's got so much information into it that I think it would serve to wake people up if they were ready to be awakened. Okay, let's go with our interview with Jim Fetzer. We're honored to have Jim Fetzer. Jim Fetzer is the real deal. Actually, that's the name of his website, is The Real Deal. And I spent some time on his website today, and he is The Real Deal. He's a friend of Karen Tostado, who uh, recommended that we talk to him about Jade Helm, because he might give us some insights that we couldn't get anywhere else. So this is Jim Fetzer. Jim? Well, I'm extremely pleased to be with you today to talk about Jade Helm, which I consider to be the greatest threat that has ever confronted the United States in its entire history. I have been doing a lot of research, publishing articles about it, and doing interviews on my show, which is now video, The Real Deal, as you observe, which is available, for example, on MBC, Media Broadcast Center, webookyourshow.com is one way to access it and it's also available on a live stream and a YouTube collection which can be accessed as well but what bothers me about Jade Helm is that it's all completely illegal uh, uh, Posse Comitatus, a statute passed in 1878 precludes the use of um, the American military to perform police functions this is a gross violation of that uh, and while they're seeking to get permission from local communities and so forth, all the governors ought to take steps to keep Jade Helm from happening because it's extremely threatening for a whole wide range of reasons. We have a very large military deployment. This is not National Guard. This is not a small grouping. This is a massive operation involving uh, even thousands of vehicles, especially armored personnel carriers, which is the type of military equipment most appropriate for conducting urban operations. The claim that this is training for some foreign venture is completely ridiculous. As a former Marine Corps officer, I would observe we train our troops for the uh, engagements we are going to conduct and where this, while it is claimed to begin on 15 July to 15 September, I'm convinced that date is merely a subterfuge so we're not supposed to become alarmed until the time grows closer. But there are all kinds of indications as to why we should be alarmed. Let me sketch just a few. There's a parallel operation in Canada called Maple Resolve. In relation to the Canadian operation, no less than 133 Target stores have been, have been closed across the country, uh, which appear to be going to be used for military facilities, command and control, just as a string of Walmarts right here in the U.S. appear to be going to be used for command and control by prior arrangement with FEMA, where it appears that any time when FEMA needs to take uh, control of those Walmarts, they will be closed and turned over to FEMA. Uh, these were closed abruptly with no notice to their employees, as occurred with the Target stores in Canada. Each of the stores in Canada represents 130,000 square feet. They've let go 17,000 employees with no prior notice. The estimated loss in uh, profits is in ex excess of $2 billion. Now, no corporation is going to gladly surrender $2 billion in profits. That means something very, very serious is taking place here. While there are some sources who have sought to convince me, among others, that this is a routine training operation, it is anything but. Indeed, the very title of the Jade Helm, uh, when you dig into the documents, indicates that it's for the purpose of conducting an, an extraction of, of, of homeland dissidents. Now, that term is a very, very peculiar term. 
because it could mean almost anything from some armed rebel force in Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria to somebody who simply believes the government has been lying to us, such as myself. I am outraged by our foreign policy in the Middle East since 9-11. 9-11 was an inside job brought to us by the CIA, the neocons in the Department of Defense, and the Mossad. The purpose was to reverse our foreign policy from one in which we never attacked any nation that not, had not attacked us first, at least that was our official policy, to one in which we became an aggressor nation, launching an attack on Afghanistan within weeks of 9-11, and then years later, launching an invasion of Iraq based upon fabricated excuses of Saddam being in collusion with al-Qaeda, which was absurd because Saddam was a secular ruler, had no interest in al-Qaeda, which wanted to impose a theocratic government, that he was seeking to develop nuclear uh, weapons by obtaining yellow cake from Niger. Uh, Ambassador Joe Wilson investigated, discovered there was nothing to it. The documents presented included the signatures of Italian officials who weren't even in office and the dates they were supposed to be signed, where Dick Cheney and Scooter Libby were so incensed by this that they outed Joe Wilson's wife, Valerie Plame, as an undercover CIA operative who was in fact managing the most important operation in our intel entire intelligence apparatus, namely one to contain the proliferation of nuclear weapons in the Middle East. This shows the disgusting depth and the degree of betrayal of our nation uh, that would be undertaken by a man occupying the, the second highest office in the United States, Vice President of the United States. Which, which led to the complete destruction of the information, the intelligence network. Many people were killed, and its whole uh, capacity to operate was abruptly destroyed. Now, we have since been engaged in a host of wars in the Middle East to benefit Israel, where the American Treasury and American young men and women have been dying to benefit Israel by deconstructing the modern Arab states that had served as a counterbalance to Israel's domination of the Middle East. We know from General Wesley Clark, who learned when he returned from serving as Supreme Commander Allied Forces Europe, which means he was a Commander-in-Chief of NATO, when he returned to the Pentagon, a general called him aside and said, General, he said, have you heard? We're going to attack Iraq. And Wesley Clark said, why? And the general said, I don't know. Uh, and, 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 and Clark was so dumbfounded, he just said, well, keep me, keep me apprised. Months later, he returned, and the general called him aside and said, uh, General, General, there's, a, there's new news. And Wesley Clark entered the office with him. He said, well, what's going on? He said, we've just received a memorandum from the department, from the Secretary of Defense, saying that we're going to take out the governments of, of seven different nations in five years, beginning with uh, Iraq and, and Libya and winding up with Syria and Iran. And Wesley said, well, what in the world for? And he said, I don't know. I guess we're just good at it. So Wesley Clark spilled the beans about what was going on at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco. The problem is that what's going on here has generated a lot of disagreement with American foreign policy. There's a lot of criticism of the go American government. And this Jade Helm exercise appears to be designed specifically for the purpose of extracting persons being called dissidents in order to process them at these temporary facilities uh, that are uh, the, will be the Walmarts against the following background. And this is what everyone has to understand. In the wake of 9-11, we, we created a huge super department of Homeland Security, bringing together some 35 previously independent government agencies. It was modeled after the East German Stasi widely recognizes as the most sophisticated and effective secret police ever created by the hand of man. We have created FEMA camps all over the country, uh, some 300 of them. Even Jesse Ventura has done a program on these FEMA camps, including the discovery of these uh, bizarre coffins that will hold four bodies at a time. Check it out. One of the most important programs Jesse Ventura has ever done. They created a new North American military command, evidently under the pretext that George W. Bush had introduced when he addressed the nation, saying that America was at war and that the, the U.S. was now a battlefield. 
and therefore they went about creating a new military command. But it's quite apparent in retrospect this had nothing to do with uh, preserving or protecting the American people. Moreover, the D Department of Homeland Security has acquired over 2 billion rounds of 40 caliber hollow point ammunition which is not even permissible for use in combat under the Hague Convention of 1899, which precludes the use of ammunition that will maim and tear and, and kill soldiers in combat. Instead, standard military ammunition is pointed with a copper jacket designed to pass through a body to take a soldier out of combat, but not to blast his body apart. They have two billion rounds of this ammunition. Now, we have been told that the massive surveillance program being conducted by the, by the NSA, which includes surveying all of our emails, all of our phone calls, all of our medical and financial records, is designed to ferret out domestic terrorists. However, we learned from the Senate Committee on Homeland Security in a report it issued on 3 October 2012, based upon its review of 680 studies from fusion centers all across the nation where fusion centers merge federal, state, and local anti-terrorist activity that in those 680 reports gathered over 2009 and 2010 they found not a single instance of domestic terrorist activity nor any case in which a fusion center had thwarted or stopped some, uh, some terrorist act from being initiated. This is a large and varied sample that supports the inference that there is no domestic terrorist activity or virtually none in the United States, which appears to be the reason why they're making up some of these fake cases, such as uh, Sandy Hook, where children are supposed to have died, or the Boston bombing, where the two brothers are supposed to have blown apart you know, injured as many as 260 victims and killing at least three. This is all completely absurd. I've done a massive amount on each. Uh, Wolfgang Halbig, who's a Florida, retired Florida state trooper, he's a former school principal with uh, over 35 years of experience. He's a nationally recognized school safety expert. Had sought to uh, obtain information about issues as innocuous as who delivered the porta potties, because we have video from the scene showing porta potties. We have video showing stacks of bottled water in the firehouse and in, in, in empty pizza cartons. We have a, a whole lot of people with name tags on lanyards. We have parents bringing children to the scene, which if it were actually the scene of a child shooting massacre would be obscene. In fact, we have now discovered the FEMA manual for this event, which runs 20 pages long that shows that there was to be a rehearsal on the 13th, going live on the 14th, and right in the manual explains a sign that says everyone must check in, which has seemed bizarre, where I even consulted a Gold Shield New York police detective about whether that would be typical for a crime scene, which he dismissed as absurd. It states right in the manual, everyone must check in. It also states right in the manual, refreshments and restrooms will be provided. The reason they couldn't provide Wolfgang with information as innocuous as who delivered the porta potties is it would have revealed they were delivered on the 13th when the official day of the shooting was a 14th. In relation to the Boston bombing, the situation is equally absurd. We have video of police on, uh, on bullhorns calling out, This is a drill! This is a drill! We have two tweets from the Boston Globe reporting that a demolition explosion will be set off during the marathon for the benefit of bomb squad activities. Another stating that one will be set off in one minute opposite the library, and one minute later it goes off opposite the Boston Public Library. I am a former artillery officer in the U.S. Marine Corps, and I can assure you this was some kind of the equivalent of a sawdust bomb or a smoke bomb. In fact, I've even been told by Hollywood producer-director Nathan Folks, whom I've interviewed about this, that it was uh, done by a smoke machine. Well, even when you look through the smoke and you can see maybe a dozen people lying on the ground, there is no blood. As Lorraine Day, MD, who is the chief of orthopedic surgery and trauma surgery for San Francisco General Hospital for 25 years has observed, that would be a physiological impossibility. You cannot have limbs blown off and there be 
no blood. This was a staged event. Nathan and I did an interview just a, a couple of days ago in which we discussed it, and he pointed out the role of several of the players there who were directing the scene, one of whom was assisting this young man who's supposed to have his legs blown off below the knee and attaching a false prosthesis with a bone extension for its more horrifying emotional impact. All of that was being done before any blood showed up. When the blood showed up, it was not human blood. It was Hollywood blood, orangish red blood, whereas I have pointed out many places, including in my uh, The Real Deal special must-see Boston bombing update, which can be found on YouTube. Uh, this, this blood was provided by some of the players and actors, and where Nathan has identified one of the key uh, actors involved as someone he'd cast in one of his own films wearing a cowboy hat by the name of Carlos Arredondo and that what's taking place is known as hyper-realistic filming where you try to create a setting that's as realistic as possible. We have also discovered, and this will astonish you, that even the footage from the Boston Marathon purporting to show the two brothers present there was, uh, was fabricated. I learned this from the aunt of the brothers, uh, Marat Saranov, who explained to me that although the video shows uh, uh, the, the older brother, Tamerlan, clean-shaven, he in fact had a beard. She sent me photographs showing him reclining with his cat with a beard. She directed me to a link showing them working out at a gymnasium shortly before uh, the marathon bombing. He had a beard. A friend of his contacted Tamerlan after the bombing to make sure he was okay, and they had dinner together. He reported Tamerlan had a beard. If you look at the film footage of Tamerlan being arrested, stripped naked, and put into a police car before they fussied up his face so you could no longer discern it, he had a beard. Even the photograph of his body, and let me point out that this body shows up after he has been taken into police custody. Can anyone have any doubt? that if he therefore has been killed, it was after he was taken into police custody and therefore he was murdered by the police. He has a beard. This is all completely outrageous. There is a whole lot more I could add. But here's what's going on with this Jade Helm. It appears too many people are seen through the government's lies, whether they're about Sandy Hook, the Boston bombing, the Murrah building in Oklahoma City, the rationale for going to war in the Middle East, whatever. It's all a pack of lies, enormous lies. These persons, therefore, are the targets of the massive NSA surveillance. Not any domestic terrorists, since, as I've already explained, domestic terrorism is virtually non-existent in the United States, except for the cases fabricated by Homeland Security, FEMA, and the FBI itself. Instead, they appear to be targeting veterans, constitutionalists, 9-11 truthers, Ron Paul supporters, NRA members, anyone who might have the courage, strength, and integrity to stand up against the imposition of a police state. There have even been slips by some of the personnel involved here that this is a dissident extraction program and that the personnel who are rounded up are going to be taken to these Walmart centers for initial processing and then set the FEMA camps for re-education. Uh, it includes that there are activities already going on in Florida where a woman snapped a photograph of a group of these, a platoon, no doubt, that was taken into custody about a dozen civilians. And when one of the officers observed that she had her camera, he, he took it from her and, and crushed it. That, of course, was private property, another instance of violation of law, even if on a tiny scale compared to what's going on with Jade Helm. But when they discovered that other civilians were there with cell, cell cameras and had taken photographs of them taking the cell phone and crushing it, they realized they had been had, so they released uh, the, their detainees and called it off. But there's much, much more going on. These Walmarts... Are, and all the targets are being closed on the absurd claim that they had problems with their plumbing. As professional plumbers have observed, even if you wanted to rebuild the entire sewer system for one of these buildings, it would take less than three months. They've all been closed for a minimum of six. Their employees have been told to seek other work, and it was done without any notice. 
uh, helicopters, military helicopters are being flown to these buildings, are being converted into military command and control centers, where the big picture appears to be this. Jade Helm in Canada is using Canadian troops to seal the Canadian border. Not from Canadians who might be trying to make their way into the United States, but, but from Americans who might be wanting to flee from the United States. Similarly, the states involved in Jade Helm here involve Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California, all the states with borders with Mexico. They are sealing the Mexican borders, not to keep Mexicans out of the United States. We all know how successful we have been at that, but keeping Americans they're searching for from fleeing to Mexico. And of course we know it's, uh, they, they already have uh, airlines under control with the Transportation Security Administration. I'm therefore very uh, disgusted to have to report that this appears to be the real deal. There have been eminent authorities such as General Albert Stubblebine, who was in the past responsible for all U.S. signals intelligence, which means he was responsible for the interpretation of all U.S. photographic and satellite imagery, who had observed in an interview he gave with a German reporter that it was obvious to him that no plane had hit the Pentagon on 9-11, because from his inspection of the facade of the building, there were no indications of any wings of any aircraft having hit it. Indeed, there's a mass of evidence that no plane hit the Pentagon, uh, which I have investigated extensively as the founder of Scholars for 9-11 Truth. In addition, a number of others, including those with contacts in the CIA, have now reported that when the troops are asking what's going on, they're being told by their officers that it's a standard training drill, but that they expect there may be some resistance and therefore they're issuing the troops live ammunition. And I would point out the absurdity of it being a standard training op, because if it were a standing training op, why would they be expecting any resistance? And if they're expecting any resistance, why would they be arming these soldiers with live rounds to fire on the American people? One or two positive signs are emerging here. The governor of Texas has been sufficiently alarmed that he's directed the Texas National Guard to monitor the activities of these Jade Helm forces. Uh, unfortunately, I learned in discussing this just last night from a source with excellent contacts that the National Guards have had their Apache helicopters, which would be their most important method of conducting any kind of conduct, away from them and given to the federal forces. This is outrageous. It's clearly illegal. Not even the president has control over the National Guard of the different states, which are exclusively under the control of their governors. But also, in addition, there have been any number of reports that once the troops realize they're being asked to fire on American civilians, there's going to be a breaking of the ranks and, and internal conflict may break out within the Jade, Jade Helm forces. But this appeared to minimize this, appears to be a reason why they seem to be recruiting special forces uh, who have been engaged in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan who were used to slaughtering women, children, old men uh, without any hesitation. So I am telling you, based upon all of my years of experience, I'm an accomplished scholar. I have, I'm about to publish my 30th book. I have published hundreds of articles. I do very thorough and meticulous research. This is the gravest threat that has ever confronted the United States of America in our entire history. Wow, I don't know, I don't know what to say, James. I'm blown away with the information that you just gave us. Uh, it seems to me that you said that the reason that for the Fort Lauderdale was going live and they had to pull it back because it was too much um, it, it, cameras. Too many people were taking pictures. So they, so they pulled back on Fort Lauderdale, but it was even going live back then. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes. That's the point I'm making. This date is a psychological deception. They're telling you it's not going to start the 15 June in order that we have our guard down and not be concerned uh, with what's actually taking place. Notice, for example, now these, this riot in Baltimore. Uh, this is a completely contrived event. 
uh, the children were getting out of school, the young people, high school and so forth, they had their access routes to transportation away from the area blocked, so they couldn't get on subways or other forms of transit. They were being channeled into this area with a, with a, a large store, pharmacy. The police were already there to channel them. As, as riots go, it was on a relatively small scale. There was a perfectly legitimate reason, since this man had been uh, chained but not given a seat belt in the back of a steel paddy wagon and then given what is called a rough ride, which actually fractured his skull and led to his death. That appears to have been completely deliberate. And believe it or not, we have a report from investmentwatchblog.com uh, footage of up to 5,000 troops to divide Baltimore into sectors and extract the dissidents. Now, this appears to me to be a reason to get the phrase extracting dissidents out into the public domain because there's no need for dissident extraction in Baltimore. These are young people, you know, mostly blacks who are upset with the abuse that the police have wreaked on black people all over the country one shooting after another, several of which appear to have been staged, including, for example, at Ferguson, where the body was allowed to lie out in the street for hour upon hour upon hour. That's not standard procedure. It should have received emergency medical attention, an ambulance showed up and taken the body away. Instead, it was left lying there. Uh, the shooting of the man in the back, where the officer fired eight times and hit him five. When you see him running away, he's not displaying any effect of the impact of those bullets on his back and when he falls he falls in a way that's calculated to bring him down gently that appears to be another staged event it looks as though the government is have conducting these events to try to provoke the people it's what's called agitation propaganda into some kind of response that might justify the imposition of martial law but the fact of the matter is they appear to be going ahead, ahead anyway, and they are using you know, the, 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 the Baltimore event as a distraction when so much attention is being cast on Jade Hill. But I assure you, that is the function of the Baltimore event, simply to draw attention away from Jade Hill, while it actually complements the objective of promoting Jade Hill by the use of that phrase, uh, extracting uh, this dissidence in in the heading of one of the articles about it. That's amazing. I know that the that the mayor of Boston seems to have implied that she was allowing a certain portion of Baltimore to be taken over by the rioters. Is that uh, what you mean? You mean, of course, the mayor of uh, Baltimore. Lord mayor of Baltimore. Is what did a, I say? A white, a white male, uh, but you know, the head of the National Guard there was a black female. And when they held the interview, uh, he was, you know, calling for the National Guard to become involved. The, the officer in charge of the National Guard said this was not martial law, but that they were coming to aid the police. And indeed, I mean, we're not talking about a rebel band that's armed, that's undertaking an insurrection. We're talking about some disenchanted members of the black population who have every reason to be unhappy with the government. And the very idea of casting this in a military fashion is extremely disturbing. It appears to me one of the reasons for the Boston Marathon bombing hoax, where there's no way in which either Zokar or his brother Tamerlan were involved, it was to bring in the, the Massachusetts National Guard so you'd have a massive display of military force so Americans would be conveyed the a psychological impression that use of military force in an American city should be taken to be something that's expectable, that we ought not to be concerned about. It's all outrageous. It's all a gross violation of posse comitatus. All these operations are illegal. And I can only say that I commend the governor of Texas for standing up. All the governors of these states should stand up. They should not only monitor the Jade uh, Helm uh, troops in their state, and direct their National Guards to monitor them, but demand the return of their Apache helicopters, because this appears to be a deliberate effort to disarm the National Guards so that they could, cannot put up a significant degree of resistance when it becomes obvious that what the Army is doing there is, 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 is taking control, possession of citizens of those states, respectively. 
for completely illegal and unethical purposes. It's a disgusting situation. The plight in which we find ourselves today is simply dumbfounding. It's amazing, and they're sealing off the border. That's like a captured audience. That's like holding the Americans that could possibly be dissident so that they can be rounded up and whatever they do when they round them up. What do you think about rounding them up? What do you think is going well, to happen? Well, we've got those 300 FEMA camps, don't we? And exactly. now we have the Walmarts for temporary processing to determine where they shall be sent. I frankly believe that those are on what is known as the red list, who include you know, the most outspoken critics of the government, uh, talk show hosts, people like me who write articles critical of the government, who take apart the lies the government has been selling us, are going to be right at the top of their list. And I would not be surprised if most of us on the red list are not going to survive intact, that we're going to be separated from our uh, parts of our body forthwith. I think this is a terribly troubling situation. So it's going to be conducted in stages. First, they're going to go for the red list, process them through the Walmart, send them to the FEMA camps, those who are not executed more or less on the spot. Then they're going to go for what's known as the blue list. Those are people who are followers of the red list individuals and who therefore are in need of re-education. And they are going to be processed through the Walmarts and set the FEMA camps where they're going to be instructed in why they should believe everything the government tells them as though it were not our God-given right as American citizens to criticize our government. If, if it means anything to be an American, it means you can criticize your government freely and without any fear of punitive retribution, but that's not how it's playing out in America today. That's amazing. And they just made it illegal to even criticize the Prime Minister in Australia. So this is a worldwide maneuver. But This is a, a, a forbinger, the, the PM of England, David Cameron, uh, announced that 9-11 truthers were on a par with ISIS which led a good friend of mine, Nick Kohlerstrom, who is the leading expert on the 7-7 London bombings, and who has been very critical and has published about the role of Israel in 9-11, an article entitled 9-11 in Zion, What Was Israel's Role, realized that he was one of those that David Cameron was uh, addressing, and therefore he took a copy of his book, Terror on the Tube, now in his third edition, down to Scotland Yard to turn himself in, in accordance with the Prime Minister's declaration, which of course was a, effectively an evisceration of the absurdity of the Prime Minister's position. But we now have the most right-wing government of, uh, uh, in its history in Canada, and it appears that we are still in the lingering influence of the Bush-Cheney administration, where I regard Dick Cheney as the most malevolent individual to ever hold high office in the United States. And where Barack Obama is allowing all of this to take place, where electing him was a sensational propagandistic stunt because as a young, articulate black man, the entire left in the United States has swooned before him and cannot countenance any criticism of this man whom they have so adored for so long even when something as monstrous as Jade Helm is in unfolding before their very eyes. Exactly, even opening the borders. Opening the borders to come in, but I guess not go out anymore. That appears to be the trap. They are sealing the borders and controlling airports, so these American dissidents, and I say this is a hugely broad and encompassing notion, uh, which has been used, you know, for foreign elements, for rebel bands who are conducting military uprising using violence. That's even now going to be applied to anyone who has even sent in an email to a friend how they think something's wrong with the government, how we don't belong in the Middle East, how they're worried about where we're going as a country. Uh, that right now today turns out to be the majority of Americans, frankly, the most recent polls have shown, so they've got a quite a challenging task ahead of them. Right. There's a lot of people to round it up. Hey, as an ex-Marine, Jim, there's this, there's this talk about uh, U.S. soldiers not firing upon U.S. citizens. 
that they're going to have to bring in Russian or Chinese troops to do that. What's your take on uh, the willingness of American soldiers to fire upon Americans? Well, a point I made in passing is that they're relying primarily on special forces, which are particularly brutal uh, elements within the military who have been responsible for the massacre and slaughter of women, children, old, old, old folks in, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and elsewhere to do the primary work here of, of conducting these operations. These are not ordinary Americans, and, and these are not ordinary forces, and I think that's the reason they have been recruited. I think the idea of Chinese or Russian troops here in the United States is simply, frankly, absurd. Uh, Russia and China are being cast as our greatest our greatest uh, competitors internationally, and it's just uh, ridiculous to think that they would be used. So you think it'll be totally American, or mostly American, probably a lot of contractors, that's what they've been using lately. They, they seem well, to... it, it, it's absurd that we have privatized so much of the military. Uh, in Boston, for example, Craft International, which was a private army created by Chris Kyle, were the perps. It even states in the indictment for Zokar that both of the backpacks were black nylon backpacks. Neither Zokar nor Hammerlin was wearing a black nylon backpack, which led an attorney at law, who's a former professor of law, who served as a prosecuting attorney and as a defense attorney to author an article about the evidence for me in which he pointed out that since the backpacks are wrong, there wasn't even probable cause for an indictment, much less evidence for a conviction. This is all completely absurd, and what we have is some kind of kangaroo court, some kind of show trial going on in Boston where all the authorities are aware that they didn't do it but they're proceeding nevertheless for its propaganda value, especially because they are being identified with the Chechnya region of Russia and because they are Muslims. This is once again a part of the effort to demonize Muslims in this country and abroad. Exactly. So in addition to uh, you noticing that the governor of Texas was standing up and calling for the National Guard to come in and monitor Jade Helm, have you seen any other positive uh, um, signs that uh, Americans are bonding together or, or uh, militias are, are forming? Or what do you see as, as some hope coming out of this? Or, or do you see any? Well, the fact is that the Internet for the last couple of weeks has been completely flooded with articles about Jade Helm. The American people are suspicious. They no longer trust their government. Many are seen through it. Uh, the Army held a, a, a briefing in a small, obscure Texas town just on Friday, allegedly to dismiss, you know, to debunk all the suspicions about what is going on. Uh, the, the courthouse there could hold 50 people. It was flooded with over 100. There were so many, they had another 100 or so that could only catch the audio that the military representative was unable to answer many of the questions that he was asked and even slipped at one point to start to talk about extracting, but he caught himself and changed the word from extract to drill as a euphemism. I think the American people are becoming alarmed, and frankly, uh, there are over 100 million armed Americans. Uh, they're not going to be able to marshal a force uh, larger than you know, a million max in, in opposition. In fact, you know, they're minimizing the numbers, but they do have equipment. If, if each of us could only take out one of them, uh, since there are so many more of us, we could wind up, you know, if each of us could take out one of them as a war of attrition, then we'll be roughly 99 million surviving free Americans, because I'm afraid this is a situation where we can either live as sli slaves or die as free men. The situation is as dire as that. I agree with Nathan Hale that I regret I have but one life to give for my country. Right, it's, it's, it's sobering. And because we've come this far, because we've come this far in, in, I don't know, unmasking Jade Helm, 
it's going to be difficult for the government to go back as the normal government. It's yes, to... yes, yes, I agree with that because this, and, and, and you're actually implicitly making a key point. So many Americans are alarmed over Jade Helm. It's such an obvious threat. It's so clearly not justified by the rationale that's been provided. People see now. It's a wake-up call. It's like a slap in the face. It's like having a glass of ice water thrown right in your face that the government does lie to us and is capable of inflicting great harm on the American people and that our naive belief that it's there to preserve and protect us and nurture freedom and liberty is merely a figment of our imagination long since past. Right. Do you, do you see, uh, well, I guess it's going to be difficult for leaders to emerge because, of course, they would be targeted as dissidents and taken down immediately. Well, we're all going to have to become leaders to the extent to which we're able to figure out what's going on. But I tell you, uh, I and others are doing our very best to spread the word, perform as it were the function of Paul Revere, except in this instance, it's not the British who are coming, it's the American military. Right. I remember a long time ago, back in college, reading uh, an article by Henry Kissinger, no less, and it talked about why it was very difficult to win in Vietnam because they had a counterinsurgency going on. I think that's probably the form that it'll take. A counterinsurgency. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I would have no doubt at all that we'll fall into a pattern of guerrilla warfare. Uh, that, fascinatingly enough, is the way we defeated the British, who were very regimented in their style of conduct of battle and enabled the Americans who would hide behind trees and use camouflage and surprise attacks to defeat them. And, you know, similar tactics are going to have to be adopted by the American people to defeat their own government. That's the appalling truth of the matter as I see it. Yeah, I think that government hasn't been our government for a long time. I don't know whether it left when Kennedy died or even before then. <clears throat> well, most certainly... We've been on a downward trajectory since the assassination of JFK, which was brought about by a coalition of very powerful special forces, special interests, including the CIA, uh, the Joint Chiefs, uh, the Eastern establishment surrounding the Fed, anti-Castro Cubans, uh, the, the Mafia, uh, the oil men, and, and Israel because Jack was opposed to Israel developing its own nuclear weapons and even had the World Zionist Council classified as an enemy agent, which infuriated David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister and the principal founder of the state of Israel. Fascinating, fascinating. So as we move into Jade Helm, uh, I, I guess we've... Uh, Everybody knows that the July 15th date is just a, a ruse because it's been going on since March when they moved in on Fort Lauderdale and tried to do a distra uh, 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 extraction drill there. So it'll be interesting to see how it rolls out. What do you, what do you, what do you see happening as you go forward? Like what? Well. It, interesting is, uh, you know, like that, let, uh, let us not live in interesting times when there's so much tumult. Yeah. I think our cameras, our cameras, our cell phone cameras are especially valuable here. I think every American should stock up on enough food and water for at least two weeks duration. Uh, if they are capable of using firearms, they should stack, uh, stock up on ammunition, practice their shooting ability. Uh, those who don't should, uh, should get on the ball here and take a firearms training course uh, as soon as possible. Learn how to use firearms. Figure out what firearms are uh, best for you because they've also been using events like uh, Sandy Hook, the complete hoax I've described, to undermine our Second Amendment right. The Attorney General, Eric Holder, is an anti-gun zealot. He even told uh, an American Democratic uh, Congress meeting in Washington as long ago as 1995, that we have to change the attitude of the American people toward weapons by brainwashing them. That was a word he used. And I believe that the Sandy Hook event 
was many years in the planning. The school itself appears to have been closed by 2008 and then been revived as a prop in 2012. And there's a, a mountain of evidence to substantiate that. So anyone who wants to learn more about Sandy Hook should also go online and watch my The Real Deal special must-see Sandy Hook update, which you'll find there. That's great. Great information. Eric Holder, oddly enough, is the one who orchestrated uh, Fast and Furious. Yes. It got massive yes. amount yes. of, of good firearms to Mexico and South America. We have, uh, we have officials at the highest levels of our government who are betraying the American people and violating their oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic, and frankly, I am simply dumbfounded. I had no idea that so many would be domestic. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, it's the whole government. It's, it's, you've got to realize that it's not a government anymore. It's a corporation. And it's a network of corporations working together to, I guess, do what they want to with us. Well, I can't thank you enough for having me on the show. I think it's terribly important to get this information out. And I'm very, very pleased that you chose to feature me because, uh, frankly, at this moment in time, nothing is more important than the American people should face up to, confront, and appreciate the threat that their own government is posing to them, their future, and their welfare at this point in time, 2015. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable, Jim. Thank you very much. We, we rather deal with topics that were not so critical and not so urgent. But this is so critical and so urgent. We want to get every information we can condensed and get it out there as quickly as we can. So that's why we're doing these podcasts. That's why we're trying to get experts like you. And Jim, you're really an expert on this subject. I really well, hope... Are, we, we have many, uh, several shows now I have done on The Real Deal, the video show, which you can find if you go to uh, webookyourshow.com and click on The Real Deal icon. You'll find I've done four or five shows about uh, Jade Helm already. I was on Rents last night talking with Jeff Rents about Jade Helm. I have been on Veterans Truth, Veterans Truth Radio 2 with Stu Webb and, and Chip Tatum and others talking about Jade Helm. I'm doing everything I can to get the word out. The American people have to know what's going on in the United States today. It's wonderful. You're a true patriot, Jim, and it's been really a pleasure having you on World Beyond Belief. Thank you very much. I hope that we can have you back um, another time, maybe on, a, maybe on a more pleasant subject, but this is a very important subject. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. That would be my great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Well, all you can say is wow after that, that whirlwind tour of, he, he knows so much information, and he can rattle it right off, and it was, it was just really refreshing to hear that, even though the information was sobering. Indeed, and I always feel so much better knowing more than wondering. You know, it just gives me kind of a sense of relief to have more information. Right. And I think we're, we're hearing about the worst of the worst. I think we're hearing truly what's, what's expected and what's going on. So I think we all should know. And this information needs to get out to as many people as, as you can find, especially in the, in the United States. If you're in the United States, you need to spread this around. If you know somebody that's in the United States, you need to get this information to them because I think this is exactly how it's going to play out. And I know, they're do I know the uh, overlords are doing a lot of things to scare us, like the hollow point bullets. I think they're going to use them, but I think that, that's a scary notion. And there's some other scary, a lot of scary notion things on the, on the website. But I think Jim kind of cuts right through to the point that's real information you can take to the bank and count on. Some of the things that were shocking to me was the fact that the Fort Lauderdale detainees were real detainees. 
that was, it was a drill, but they were using real detainees. And I wonder what happened to those detainees that they put into the white vans. I watched that video over and over again. Thinking that it was grill, a, a drill was somewhat less horrifying. But as Jim said, knowing that the only reason that leaked out is because private individuals were filming it. Yes, was, I think those private individuals actually prevented something really horrible from happening. Which leads me to think that we can do so much more to stop this in its tracks. Yeah. If we all get out there with your... You know, almost everyone I know in the U.S. has an iPhone now with a camera in it. Video camera. And you get those cameras out and you let them know that we're on to them. Right. Maybe we can prevent a lot of tragedy from happening. And don't overlook anything they're saying. There's a situation going on now in Boston. And the, the government's making certain moves. The local government's making certain moves. And they're really betraying their hand. And the more eyes we can get in Baltimore, I think the better off we're going to be in stopping that because that is, they're going to try to trigger martial law in several cities with these riots. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason we should be rioting. We're all Americans and we all, we all really need to stick together or we're going to end up in a really much more horrible situation than, than, than anybody can even imagine. Another thing that I was thinking of all during that interview is that this now, this it's out of the bag. And you, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. You know, once it's out, it's out. Once most of the population knows what's going on, the Jade Helm, we were able to catch them and they're, they were giving us, they're giving us more information than I'm sure they wanted to give us in Jade Helm. And we're cutting through the misinformation and getting to the real information, which they didn't want us to know. They wanted this to just be a, I think what they wanted us to, to, to happen was for us just to have military on the streets and get used to this, and then they'll pop off a couple of riots like the one in Baltimore and say, well, we really need to have these police here. And then after the police are there, then, then drop the economy, allow the dollar to go away, and as people become desperate, the control system is already in place. But I think what we're doing by getting the word out, and you're getting the word out, giving this information to everybody, makes it so it's not going to come out the way they want it to come out. And we might be able to stop them in their tracks. And I believe if we can put them off six months, if we can put them off a year, the chances increase incrementally every month of their not being able to do this. So the more we can get this word out, the better off we're going to be. Also about this not putting the toothpaste back in the tube, we can't go back to the old America trusting the government. We're done with that. The old 1970, 1980 America, all that stuff where uh, whether you grew up or raised your kids or you were a kid during that time, it's not going to happen again. We're not going to trust the government again. We know that it's run by, actually I believe it's run by a different species than us. I think it's run by people with their psychopaths at least. And we're not going to have that kind of government. I hope that we wake up to the fact that government is inherently corrupt. And if it's not corrupt at the beginning, it becomes corrupt. So we're much better off with smaller, more local modern uh, models of self-governance. Uh, community, the community model that's not devoid of rules, but is definitely devoid of rulers. We've lived in models, actually a year ago, we lived in a community where it was a, it was an indigenous community, no rulers, just rules. Now they had people that would do certain things in the community on behalf of the community, like there was the president of the water. 
Now, the president of the water, he couldn't shut people's water off, but he could work on behalf of the water department to interface with the, the, grander, the grander water department on behalf of this community. So I hope we understand that the government of the United States as we know it, and but perhaps governments as we know them, are inherently corrupt. And we're really going to need to look for new models, like the community model, uh, as our way to go forward. Because just putting in a different government, it creates a revolution where we revolve from that government to another government to another government to another government. We don't need that. We're, we're more mature. We're more evolved in that. And besides, if we can get rid of these damned overlords, the amount of technology that they've been hoarding from us that we'll take possession of will make our lives so much more wonderful. Um, no more dependence on oil. No more dependence on roads. We'll have lighter than aircraft. We'll certainly have all the energy we could use because they have, tech, they have Tesla technology. We'll immediately have the Tesla technology. We'll immediately have all of those. So, you know, this is, a, this is a, an interesting battle. And so much is, this, as a, is at stake. So much. So. so much. I mean, if you can just imagine the world we could be living in as soon as we get rid of them. Right. And the, the American dollar is going to go. There's no doubt about that. But there's no reason why America has to go. The concept of America has to go, but America, the land, the people, uh, the ideals of freedom can still be there. We just need to band together and do what we can to get the word out and stand united. And even though this is a tough information, we, you have to know this information to get to the other side. So I hope this didn't bum you out. I know it's going to take a couple of days for you to integrate this information, uh, especially if you're in the United States or you have close friends and relatives in the United States or loved ones. I know this is going to be tough. Give as many warnings. Get this word out to as many people as you can. It's really critical that we come together now because this is our time to shine. This is our time to overcome the evil force that's holding us down and has been holding us down. So, do you have any other that comments? That was very beautifully said. Thank you so much. Because that gives me hope that we can, you know, be the best of what we are as humanity. We're compassionate, loving beings, and we're all in this together. So we need to stick together and get through this to the other side where things can be absolutely wonderful. That's right. So that's the end of this world beyond belief. Um, I hate to lay that information on you, but I hope we ended on a high note, and I hope you're encouraged. Don't glaze over this information. Let it sink. Let it steep. But then get in action. That's what Mindy and I are doing. We're getting in action. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea to be prepared for the worst so that if there is a brief period of time during the transition, we can take care of ourselves and our families and our neighbors the best we can before the crisis is in such an extreme yeah. state that we, you know can't fare well through it. Right, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't well, be afraid. There's suffering in the world, but there doesn't need to be fear. Um, don't fear things that aren't happening today. Fear them when they happen. Right now, it's not happening today, so get in action. Get ready. If and when it does happen, we'll deal with it. We're human beings. We've gone through a lot in our... We're very resourceful. We're very resourceful. We have creativity on our side. We have creativity, love, compassion. We're human beings. Isn't that wonderful? It is. It All is. Right. So thank you so much for tuning in to the World Beyond Belief. We're so happy we're all in this together and you're sticking with us. And we'll see you again in a week or so on the next World Beyond Belief podcast. Bye-bye.